Wednesday, taking on number 25, Louisville. Billy Donovan's going to try to beat Rick Pacino for the first time as a head coach. Now, with Florida uh, very, very likely to lose number one, Kentucky could move up to the number one spot, but they've got to beat Michigan State today in order to do that. Hi, everybody. Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale with you. Great atmosphere here, as always. And for Billy Donovan and Rick Pacino, a little something extra going against one another. Well, you know, Dan, it was a phone call. That's right. Rick Pacino picked up the phone, and he made a call to Jeremy Foley, the athletic director. He says, I got a young, vibrant guy. He'll be perfect for your program. He sold them big time, and he has not disappointed. He's been a star since he arrived in Gainesville. Billy Donovan did it also in 1987 when he was shooting the three for Rick Pitino and Providence and they went to the final four and the two big wins they had to get to the final four were right on this That's floor right. against Georgetown and Alabama and it was Billy the Kid shooting the J. Back when he was Billy the Kid about 17 years ago when he first met Rick Pitino they go a long ways back and for more on that let's go to Doris Burke. Well, Dan, Rick Pitino calls Billy Dunham his favorite story in 30 years of coaching, but ironically, his first impression of Billy was not what you might expect. If you would have told me when I first met him and took over that he could play for me a half a season with the New York Knicks, I would have said his father was the owner of the team. So it was, uh, it, there's no way that could have been possible. And then today to see him and what he represents, he represents, I think, all the great things about coaching. This is a relationship that almost did not happen. When Patino arrived on Providence's campus in 1985, Billy Dunneman said, I want to transfer coach. When that did not work out, Coach Patino said, listen, Billy, lose 30 pounds, develop a jump shot, and we'll see what happens. The rest, Dan and Dick, is as they say, history. I'll tell you one thing, Doris. He made some phone calls. He got on a phone, Patino did, and he called up Fairfield in Northeastern, and he said, I got a kid for you. They didn't want him. And finally, he told Billy, he said, Billy, you can stay here, lose some weight, and maybe you can be a good practice player. And the rest is, as Doris said, it's just incredible, the story of what he did with Providence. And we have a Louisville foul two seconds into the game. Francisco Garcia picks up the foul. The Florida starting lineup, the usual five, very talented offensively, coming off an overtime loss against Maryland on Wednesday. Anthony Roberson, not a true point guard, but handles the ball most of the time for Florida. Now the officials, Tom Eads and Andre Patillo will confer. The ball will stay with Florida. A look at the Louisville lineup. They don't have a lot of real power inside. Whitehead at 6'6 is a great rebounder, but Garcia at 6'7 is the guy to keep an eye on. He's coming off back-to-back 24-point -back games, and what's most incredible about that, between those two games, he got word of a family tragedy. His brother was shot and killed in the Bronx just a few days ago. Garcia stayed for the Wednesday game, then went home on Thursday with Coach Pacino for a service, flew back here late Thursday night, Rick Pacino tried to talk him out of playing Wednesday, tried to talk him out of playing today, but Garcia wants to be on the floor with his teammates. Spoke to him before the game, and he told me that this is basically a way he can get a little bit away from it, but his roommate's certainly been a very supportive guy, Dean, and he's getting great support from the Louisville family and Rick Pacino. We certainly sent our sympathy and our just uh, absolute heartbreaking news to learn about the passing of his brother in such a tragic situation. He was actually gunned down in an apartment complex lobby. Louisville with its first possession of the game after kind of a sloppy possession for Florida. They fell 17 points behind Maryland before rallying to get it into overtime. Now Larry O'Bannon on the drive, and he is fouled. O'Bannon's well, really been a guy that's given him a lot of positive minutes. He's given him a three-point shooter. I think when we look at Florida offensively, we're going to see them really move the ball a lot better than they did against Maryland. In fact, in the Maryland game, you ready for this? They had a practice session the next day, and they charted and evaluated the film, and they were shooting the basketball. And we said such in the, in the first half that they were just impatient. They were shooting the ball, Dan, 1.2 passes. Wow. They were not moving the basketball. I think that you'll see them move the ball a lot better today. The foul on Dreyer, his first. O'Banna knocks down one out of two, and they've got some very good passers. Dreyer with the ball right now. Walsh can pass. David Lee is a big guy. He's a very, very good passer. They've got the guys on the floor. Well, that's three. That's four. That's the fourth pass in that position. That's five. That's six. Six passes they've made in this possession against Maryland with one pass, and up the win. Good shot D by Louisville. You always expect that from a Rick Pitino team. Lee on the drive has it blocked by Kendall D'Artez. Gets it back. Shot clock did not reset. Now Cole is with a miss, and Louisville brings down the rebound. D'Artez had nine blocked shots against Holy Cross, a school record. 
The team had 18. Luke Whitehead, a big fan favorite, leads the jump hook a little bit short, and it's out of bounds to the Gators. The one dilemma for Louisville is post presence inside. They have to find a way to get some point production on the interior. Watch Nortez rotate over. There he comes over to give help on Lee. Lee's coming off a tough performance. He was 1 for 12 against Maryland. Rick Pitino working the refs as always. How similar in style, as you can see, Louisville, a big-time shot-blocking team led by D'Artez on the inside. How similar are the styles of Rick Pitino and Billy Donovan? Well, both guys really adopt the personnel. They know whether or not they can go inside, outside. But style of play, they like to play a fast-paced game. They like to play an unselfish game. And they like to really get after you defensively. Polis misses the 17-footer. Garcia back the other way in transition. A gifted shooter. And the preseason player of the year pick in Conference USA. I tell you, Garcia is one of the best slashers in basketball. One of the best swing players, along with guys like McCants and Langford and Ricky Porter. Shanks home a three. Wow. Francisco Garcia from out of New York City. He's a special talent. And you talk about heart and courage. He's playing here with a heavy, heavy heart. A four to nothing lead early for Louisville. Maryland. Got a big early lead, 15 to 4 on the Gators, down in Gainesville on Wednesday. They're moving the ball again quite a bit, Dick. Double team on Polis, finds the open man. Look at the ball move. Look at the ball move. We talked about they will move the basketball. There's a perfect example. Great ball reversal. And Florida going to the bench early. That's Muhammad Abakar, who came in about a minute ago for Christian Dreyer knocking down the three. He can shoot. That's the reputation he has, Dan. And Ryan Appleby, Dick, who didn't play at all against Maryland, is now going to the come into the game. There's a travel called on Louisville. First turnover of the game against the Cards. So Dreyer's out already. And now Appleby's going to come in, and Roberson's going to come out. So Billy Donovan going deeper into the bench earlier than he normally has done this year. I think he said in a message loud and clear, we have to compete. We're up there on top now. Everybody's going to play at another level against us. Rick Pacino wanted to foul and had a case as Appleby used that off arm to create a little space. Avatar the miss, rebound Cardinals. I like Dean. You talk about Dean and Francisco, two really super souths. And best friends as well. Dean on the drive is fouled. Dean is not a natural point guard. Remember the great Reese Gaines who was here for four years. Dean has slid over to the point guard spot to replace Gaines. We had some great games here. They had that blowout over Kentucky, and then Kentucky regrouped and had a phenomenal season. And then we had that game when Marquette, when Wade put on an unbelievable show. Yes. And then we had Gaines making a big play down at Marquette for a W. But you know, you talk about Dean, you know how he ended up at Louisville? Bill Parcells. You ready for this? Bill Parcells spotted a play in the summer league down here, pulled up with Patino, and said, man, you want to take a look at this kid. The three rattles out for Alhaji Mohammed, who has just checked in for Louisville. Noah Diakite, who's a junior college transfer. Uh, good shot blocker. He's into the game for the Cardinals now as well. And Dreyer has returned for Florida. Mohammed was really working on his shot early here this morning. He really was knocking him down with regularity. Diakite is, is a shot blocker. He's yep. a definite shot blocker, as you said. There he is, number four. TV not even really challenge him up on top. Boy, switch up on top. Boy, they challenge Garcia. Got to get out on him. He's going to try to drive on David Lee, who got a piece of the shot. Louisville gets it back. Hearing 10 on the shot clock. Pull up by Dean. He's got the good middle range jump shot as well as the long range jump shot. And he's got good handle. Rick really is high on Dean. Here's Dreyer. He's had one great game this season as Lee is stripped, gets it back, and is fouled. David Lee, as Dick mentioned, was just 1 for 12 against Maryland Wednesday. It was 0 for 9 in the first half. We're going to watch the entry down to the low post. There's Lee working on the interior, comes back with a loose ball, and finally he gets a bounce to go his way. Nothing went his way against the Terps. But let me say this. You better sing some praises of the Terps. They were so prepared emotionally, physically, mentally. They came out, and when they jumped out by 17, I don't think they could play any better yep. than the way they play. Foul on Luke Whitehead, his first. More subs this time for Florida. Adriana Moss into the game for the Gators as Vanell Cole sits down. And now Lee, that 52%, that was 64% before the Maryland game. Before a 1 for 12. That's what that will do to you. Cannot convert on the free throw. And they missed four big free throws in the last minute against Maryland in regulation time. They went 0 for 4. 
Three rebounds now for Luke Whitehead. He has been a rebounding force for the Cardinals late last season and again at the outset of this season. There's no doubt this club belongs to Dean in terms of the point guard, the orchestra leader, their scorer, their slasher is Garcia. Garcia on the bench right now. Here's O'Bannon trying to shake Dreyer. He's got a big size advantage. Jumper won't go, and Whitehead just went over the back. And Luke Whitehead has just picked up his second foul of the game. You got to chart that. That can be big because they're so limited in terms of personnel up front. Winter X Games 8 coming in January, live for the first time on ESPN. bring a bouquet. Actually, it's more like a bouquet. Now, pick up a fresh holiday meal with all the fixings and get a large popcorn chicken free. For Kitchen Fresh Chicken, you got a KFC What's Cooking. Who, who told you I was obsessed? Did she say that? Gel Max Comfort Grip Tools are perfect for me. They're specifically designed to feel good in your hands. I can put her down anytime I want. Not now, maybe later. <laughs> Gel Max Comfort Grip. I live here. New from Black & Decker. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball, brought to you by Cablevision. Welcome back to Louisville, everybody. This is not just a basketball game here today between the Cardinals and the Gators. Cardinals with an early one-point lead here at Freedom Hall, but their best rebounder, Luke Whitehead, is on the bench with two fouls. This is also the Billy Minardi Classic. Billy Minardi was Rick Pitino's brother-in-law, Pitino's wife, Joanne's brother, and Minardi was one of the people killed on 9-11, and he worked at the World Trade Center. Here is Coach Patino on a dear friend of his, Billy Minardi. Everybody has a best friend. When it turns out your best friend is also your brother-in-law, and probably a major reason why I married my wife, to be closer to him, um, it, it takes on special meaning. Uh, the three of us, my wife, Billy, and we did everything together. I mean everything. I never went anywhere without him. Uh, never coached a tournament game without him. He was there all the time with us both. Last year they had a tournament in honor of the memory of Billy Minardi, and this year Billy Donovan coming up to play Rick Pitino's Cardinals. This is the Billy Minardi Classic. They're going to continue this. They've also raised a ton of money here locally in a new dormitory where the players stay here on campus in Louisville is now known as the Billy Minardi Hall. Yeah, he did a great job raising a lot of dollars as Lee takes the ball in a basket aggressively for the Billy Minority Hall, where a lot of the players live and other students as well. And he got a lot of help from a lot of his friends. Uh, he's very close with Chris Sullivan, an outstanding guy who really is a guy that is very, very generous. He's the owner of Carabas and Outbacks and Goldfish uh, Grill. And when Chris is here at the game as a Kentucky graduate and very close with uh, Rick Pitino. I mean, really super close. And how close was he and Billy Minority every day? Other than going to Europe, Rick told me, told me before the game, every day of his life, from the time he met Billy Minardi, he spoke to him at least once a day on the phone. So that, my friend, is a close, close relationship. Noah Diakate with the foul. David Lee knocks down a couple of free throws to give the Gators the lead. Good hustle there on the defensive end by Roberson to knock the ball out of bounds. Take a look at Louisville right now in Conference USA. They'll be going out to that Big East. I really believe we're going to the Big East along with Cincinnati and Marquette and DePaul and South Florida, joining the likes of Syracuse, Connecticut and Villanova and Georgetown and Pittsburgh and all those teams. <laughs> I think you're going to see a lot of coaching 
turnabout. I think you're going to see a lot of coaches fired because a lot of guys are going to be nine and nine. Yeah. Every game's going to be a tough oh, game, right? Every game, there's not going to be any automatics, and everybody's got the team at a big dance and a big tournament. So I think you're going to see a coaching turnover big time. Otis George into the game for Louisville, number 52. Taekwon Dean being defended right now on a switch by Christian Dreyer. Dean much quicker, but a much smaller. And now away from the ball, we've got a foul against the Gators. Appleby has picked up his first. I think the one message you can see has been loud and clear by Billy Donovan. Move the basketball and be a little bit more aggressive on a defensive end. Something they were not against Maryland, and Maryland took advantage of it. The good young kids at Maryland responded to Gary Williams' game plan, and he came out and attacked. As you look at Billy, five consecutive years. I think it's amazing. NCAA tournament and NCAA in terms of tournament plus winning 20 games a year for five consecutive years at Florida. O'Bannon turns it over. Garcia was hollering at him, take the open jump shot, but O'Bannon didn't like the look. I think one thing that's so disappointing to Florida and their fans, only twice in history number have they one. been ranked number one, and each time they lost the very next game they played. Well, you can understand the loss to Kentucky out of Lexington. I mean, that is a nice zigzag pass. Very unselfish play there. Should have shot it. Oh, and two Cardinals collide and fall out of bounds, and then Moss airballs the jumper. Great look by Lee, and Lee's an excellent passer for a big player. Dreyer should have shot that three-point shot. But, you know, losing to Lexington of Kentucky, you can understand. Oh, look at the little collision. It's five on three. Yes, sir. <laughs> Two-man advantage for the Gators, but they couldn't score. Look at this right here. Two to seven and two for eight. Garcia and Walsh. That's going to be one of the big matchups we're keeping an eye on here today. Garcia 32 in white and Walsh 44 in blue. Two of the premier wing players in college basketball. Gartez the miss. Lee the rebound and the foul going against the Gators. Is it Dreyer or is it Walsh? It's Dreyer. His second. Later today, a full day of college basketball on ESPN and ESPN2. Highlighted by two great games. Oregon taking on Kansas after us here on ESPN. And then tonight at 9 Eastern on ESPN2, it's Memphis and Illinois. Stick around at halftime. Andy Katz has a report on both Kansas and Illinois. If you haven't heard it, some bad health news for the Illini and a disciplinary problem for the Jayhawks who's going to leave them shorthanded against Oregon. Today. Well, Graves got suspended in Darren Williams' situation. Now with a broken jaw, and that's a big blow for the fighting Illini. Good news is they'll get him back in January for the Big Ten season. So two fouls now on Dreyer, Florida. He's gone back to the bench. Dean from the corner with a rainbow three. No good. Rebound, D'Artez. That's what they want out of South D'Artez. Get on the glass. O'Bannon, the three won't stay down for him. Both teams are cold here early. Florida really moving the basketball a lot better than they did in that game against Maryland. And now foul on the perimeter on Dean. The Louisville kids play tough, hard-nosed defense. Sometimes they think officials call it too tight. Other coaches think they don't call him tight enough. Yeah, you know, coaches are going to cry about that. But the one thing about Rick Pitino is he really teaches kids how to compete. And I think that's the one thing he did with Billy Donovan. He taught him about work ethic, and he taught him about how to compete when he played for him at Providence. You can see Louisville's had rebounding problems this year, although today so far so good. But keep in mind, Luke Whitehead, their best rebounder, has two fouls already, so we don't know how much he'll play again here in the first half. There's another foul. No, it's just out of bounds. Knocked away. It'll stay with the Gators. That Walsh does nice play. He goes over to Anthony Roberson. Gives him a little tap on the back. He does great penetration right there. Roberson hit those two big threes to get him back in the game against Maryland. This is a Florida team that from last year lost Matt Bonner and Brett Nelson and I think a real underrated player with Justin, Justin Hamilton. Hamilton. Tough defender, good leader, point guard, and maybe like a lot of good teams, Dick, they're young, and they're still searching for an identity this season. They are very young, and we got so much parity in college basketball. The three-point shot has become an equalizer. Players leaving early, mostly big players. Give it up. He's got Garcia. Give it up. Dean all the way, and Otis George cleans up the mess. Otis George with the rebound, but he should have given that rock up. But you got a call as a trailer. 30-second timeout, Florida. Rick Pitino going after his 400th collegiate win. If he makes it happen, it will be in his 545th game. The same as the General Robert Montgomery Knight got his 400th in his 545th game. That's right. 
One point lead now for the Cardinals after forcing the turnover in the corner. Walsh took a little bump here, but you're going to get bumped by Louisville. Had to throw up the pass in desperation. Then it was a three-on-one. Yes, he's got a trailer. All he's got to do is throw a little hook pass to his roomie. His roomie's going to get him in a room tonight, and he's going to say, hey, hey, Taekwon, I was wide open. You didn't give it up, man. You didn't give it up. Come on. got to give up the rock. You want to be the point guard, you give it up to me. But Otis George was in the right place at the right time with the offensive rebound. For more, let's go to Doris Burke. Well, Dan, I was talking to Taekwon Dean yesterday about moving to the one-guard spot and the adjustments there. He said, honestly, he said, I'm a quiet guy. The most difficult thing for me was being the vocal leader on this team. But certainly from a skill perspective, Dick, he certainly looks ready to be at that position. Yeah, he really does. He handles it well. Not as well as you handled it when you played at Providence, and you were even better than Billy yep. Donovan at that time. Yeah, back in 87, not only was Rick Pitino the coach and Billy Donovan the point guard of the men's team, but Doris Burke is the point guard on the women's team. She was a record breaker. Still second in Providence assists all time. There's where Roberson is dangerous. Like Dean, he's a scoring point guard, a guy adjusting to the one spot. Yeah, he's a guy that creates points as well as give the ball up. He's more of a guy trying to make the adjustment to be the point guard, but you don't want to take away his ability to score. You don't want to restrict kids that have that kind of talent. Just like Gracie Wright down at Indiana. You don't want to restrict a kid like that. Mike Davis is handling him perfectly. Dar Let him score. Dartez kicks it back out to Dean. Dartez not much of a score in the post. His best skill is shot blocking. Now Garcia with a tough catch in the corner, but an offensive foul after the pass. I think Dean just kept going and ran over Walsh, and he's called for the foul. You know, you mentioned Dartez after a poor performance. I mean, he was non existent against Iowa when Iowa beat them in the opening game in a John Wooden Classic. After the game, the next day of practice, he told Rick Petito's young son, his 12-year-old son, he said, hey, tell your dad not to get down on me. He said, just rebound. Yeah, Ryan. The kid yeah, said, Ryan. why don't you get a rebound? Yeah, Ryan told me today <laughs> he wants to be a coach. Yeah. I asked him, he said, I'm going to be a coach. Doesn't want to play at Louisville, wants to go right into coaching. Dean, meanwhile, just picked up his second foul on that charge stick. So for Louisville, Tyquan Dean and Luke Whitehead already on the bench with two fouls. Rick Patino's bench and his depth will be tested here today. What you doing, Brian? Uh, I'm just putting my name and address in these bottles and sending them out to sea. <laughs> Hopefully someone will find them and contact me someday. Wow. <laughs> Why? Why do you torture me, Brian Henderson of 12 Maple Lane? With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Brian! Ooh. Nice to meet you. And for you, sir? Well, <laughs> the usual. Come on, try something new. It's Olive Garden's new stuffed chicken sienna. Stuffed with four Italian cheeses and topped with a hearty marinara sauce. Incredible. You guys, you can order from me anytime. <laughs> Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Meanwhile, in Albuquerque, the CFO of a burgeoning olive import company has an epiphany. By eliminating one olive from every jar of olives they sell, he could save the company $200,000. An idea so well received that he is asked to save 500000 more. There you go, Mr. Carter. Hard to believe a phone can save us a million bucks, huh? Inside that microphone is something familiar, a battery. And while you might think all batteries are the same, consider this. When Bon Jovi puts on a show, the battery that powers their microphones is always a Duracell. So whether you've got 50,000 screaming fans or you're working a slightly smaller room, it just has to work. Duracell, trusted everywhere. Stop the your bad! Shoot him! What, what, what are you doing, man? That's my bad. Now show him your badge. Bad Boys 2. Own it now on DVD. Hey there, Kara Capuano with you in the ESPN College Basketball Studios, keeping an eye on what else is going on around the nation. Wisconsin, Milwaukee at Wisconsin, number 19 Badgers taking advantage of an early turnover. They have won 10 straight in the rivalry. Scott? 
All right, Kara, thank you. Well, Wisconsin ranked not ranked number one like Florida is. They won't be after this week because of the loss to Maryland. They just haven't handled that number one spot very well the last couple well, of years. Well, you know, Kentucky wins today. Kentucky will be number one. They have not handled it very well, but that was a tough game down there in Lexington. They should have won the game against Maryland at home. That shouldn't have gotten away with them. But you know what? What does it really matter who's number one right now in college basketball? It matters March Madness, man. It doesn't matter now. Play the best. Learn about your team rather than beating up on cupcakes. Now, to BCS, that's a joke. What we got out there, computer determines who plays. Southern Cal in football not playing for the national title, number one of both polls. That is absolutely absurd. That's pressure defense by the Gators, but Louisville gets it all over. Brandon Jenkins, a freshman point guard from Detroit, number 11. Into the game for the Cardinals because Dean is out with two fouls. Whitehead's got two fouls as well, and Dreyer's got two for Florida. There's a high screen. They like to use those high screens. Great quickness to match on it. He didn't use the you didn't use the screen, went opposite the screen, a little one-on-one -on -one maneuver. He's very explosive. Gonna watch him in a one-on-one -on -one maneuver. No one rotates over for Florida. I mean, I could see he beats Moss to the basket, but someone's got to rotate and give help. You know, and I remember you talking about that in the game against Maryland and the game against Arizona, that nobody's playing some help defense for the Gators right now. Team defense is everybody working together and really Everybody stepping in, giving a little help, closing off angles, but doubling up on post. Chris Richard, a freshman from Lakeland, Florida. He's on the floor right now for the Gators. That's him with the ball. Big, strong guy inside. Nice look to Abigar for three. Rebound Louisville. Richard is a big, strong inside player. He'll get better and better offensively. That's not a strength. Jenkins from Garcia not there. And a foul on the Gators. Appleby commits the foul, and that's going to be three free throws and the second foul on Appleby. Yeah, not a really good play right there by Appleby. Comes way of out in the state of Washington. Here's the contact. Give him three opportunities on the line. You know, Rick Pitino right now is taking two teams to the Final Four. He could be the first coach to take three. And I will tell you, my friends, wait until that recruiting class he has coming in, headed by Sebastian Telfair from out of New York City. When they come in next year, this program goes to another level. A lot of folks saw Telfair on ESPN2 Thursday night taking on Darius Washington. They've also got another player. Assistant coach Vince Taylor was telling me about Dante Smith. He described him as a guy with Dwayne Wade-like skills, but he's bigger than Wade. He's an outstanding shooter, but does everything else well. And this Louisville class that's coming in next year expected to be by far the best that Rick Pitino's had since coming to Louisville. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt it's his best class. The bottom line is you forgot about the kid. We didn't mention Farley at 6'10", coming in as well as an outstanding player. Brian Johnson, everybody wanted him. A 6'8 player from Oak Hill Academy. I mean, they are going to be absolutely loaded. And Telfair, you and I said it. We so want another message to Rick Pitino. We want Telfair in a Jimmy B, B class. Yep. We want Louisville. We great if Louisville and Syracuse. I'm hearing the word that he is talking Possibility. to. You know, he's yeah. talking to our guy about playing in a Jimmy V class. And Kirk Magnus is our guy. And Rick Pitino is talking about that possibility happening. And oh, look at Roberson. Somehow keep the ball and split the double team. Walsh misses the three. And Abacar commits the foul over the back. Abacar, I don't know how he could have thought to get away with that with Tom E. Now, I'm really saying it would be a win-win situation if Sebastian Telfair and Louisville played at Madison Square Garden. You'd have a sellout crowd. It would help the Jimmy V Classic. It would raise thousands of dollars to feed a disease that we all want to put an end to. Both teams shooting under 30% through the first 10 minutes of the game. And the Akate tries to thread the needle baseline to Garcia. Andre Patillo is going to overrule John Clockerty. And the ball will stay with the Cardinals. I tell you, Billy Donovan told me before the game, what he learned from Rick Pitino is how to organize a program. He learned how to recruit, how to handle players. All the things that are vital, recruiting is, is so important, the bloodline of college coaching. Well, Billy Donovan in his first two years before Pitino got there was barely playing. Didn't seem to have much of a future in the basketball. As you can see how Louisville especially has struggled from outside. But Rick Pitino, as Doris told us earlier, said to him, hey, you got to work on this. you got to lose some weight, get in shape. And Billy Donovan turned into an all-American caliber player. Let's go back to Doris for more. Well, ironically, then, when Billy Donovan was working on Wall Street and called Pitino and said, listen, I want to get into coaching, Pitino discouraged him. He said he knew he was going to make a ton of money because of the connection. 
connections, and he said, listen, you think about it for three days, Phil. He came back to him three days later and said, listen, I want to coach. Garcia make it like Billy Donovan did for Rick Pitino. I'll tell you one thing, they play really hard. These Louisville kids come after you. Florida's got a battle on their hands if they want to bounce back and get a W off for losing to Maryland. Listen to this crowd, man. Listen to them. Five-point lead Louisville. The only guys working harder than the players are Patino and Donovan on the sideline. Both of them have worked up more of a sweat than the players have already. Billy Donovan would win that battle one-on-one, <laughs> no doubt about it. Walsh passed it up. Shot clock at three. Lee from outside with the air ball, and Louisville's got it again. You can see the focus on the Louisville team. Garcia, oh, 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 but wait, wave it off. Wave it off. The foul is on David Lee before the bucket. Foul on Florida, but before Diakite jammed it home. There it is. Oh, on that's the a foul. Yeah. Definitely. Good call by Tom Eads. Lee steps in. He doesn't want it, Mr. Patino. He says, no, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> I tell you, can he dress it well? Yeah, he's you he's know, got his Armani special. I want his hand-me-downs. <laughs> he doesn't look like he's working up a sweat and working his hard right now because his look always stays together. Billy Donovan gets rid of the jacket and the sweat's pouring off him. But both of these guys demand the utmost in effort from their players. That was a trademark when he went down to that Kentucky program and he rejuvenated it, won the national title in 96. Would have won it in 97, I really believe, if they didn't have an injury to a key player. As you look at his shoe right here. That's for Francisco Garcia for his brother, Hector Lopez. As we mentioned, shot and killed Monday night in the Bronx. Garcia played Wednesday against the advice of Rick Pitino. Went home with Rick Pitino Thursday for a service and now is back here to play on Saturday. And Taekwon Dean, who's Garcia's best friend, told us that uh, Hector Lopez and Francisco Garcia's mother is taking the body back to the Dominican for burial today. That was a great ball movement and a high post entry. Francisco was telling me that uh, his mom uh, was going out at 6 in the morning. We're going to see this up here from the high post entry. We're going to watch some good low post. Well, watch this up here. Freeze it. See right here. Now look, he's already looking. He's sealing inside, and they got a layup. Good ball movement, unselfish, and there's Lee with the conversion. And that's what he was trying to get across to them in his team meeting after losing to Maryland. Make the extra pass, look for one another, you'll get high percentage shots. There it is again. Avatar changes to Walsh for a high percentage look. And Avatar with the follow. I tell you, Avatar's starting to earn dance some BT, some playing time that type of dance. Avatar now with five, and the Gators are back within two right after a 7 0 run by Louisville. D'Artez and Whitehead and Dean have all returned for the Cardinals. Remember, Whitehead and Dean each playing with two fouls. And they need Whitehead. He's a guy on the interior that they definitely need. Uh, Garcia on the cut from Dean. He is so terrific. So he has got a great fluidity to his game. Moves well without the basketball. Dick tonight, ESPN has the Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Wendy's at 8 Eastern. The show begins with Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, and Mark May live from Grand Central. Then Reese joins Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit at the Yale Club for live interviews with the finalists. Who is going to win the Heisman? Well, you know, we tried to have a little fun with that. The question now is, did White hurt himself big time with that loss to Kansas State? It looked like he was going to be a lot for it. Could we let Manning step in there? He knows. And maybe a Fitzgerald could be close. Mary out of Michigan, the other finalist tonight. Appleby getting a lot of minutes early here. Nice move. Lee on the drive. Nice move by Lee. Looks a lot better right now with the balls going down than he did against Maryland. One for 12. He's already got eight points in this game. He's the high scorer for Florida. Mohamed <laughs> off. Dartez in the right place at the right time. And that's what they need out of Dartez. They ran a high post. Cut off the UCLA look. Martez with the offensive rebound with the Vincent Junior College produced some great players. Ricky Green used Florida got away with one. Appleby backed up and that left foot went into the backcourt. As you can see, the offensive rebounding and the second chance points, very important for Louisville. They're a team that has been out rebounded so far this season, but they've done the job against the Gators so far today. And that's where we heard them against uh, Iowa when they lost to Iowa. They got nothing at all out of Dartez. 
and he came back real strong. You know, I think speaking about Iowa, playing so great, looks like they're rolling, and all of a sudden they get beat by Northern yeah. Iowa by 11. What about Winthrop going out beating Georgia by 20? This game is wacky. Yeah. That's why I love it, though, man. There's nothing like college basketball. The spirit, the enthusiasm, the excitement that's generated. You and I feel it every campus we go to. Mohammed the foul, and Walsh at the line hits the front end of the one and one. Talk about some great slashers. You know, Walsh certainly can score there. I love Langford. I love Adams. What about Adams on Arizona? McCants is having a heck of a year for North Carolina. Adams I, and Iguodala are scary together for the Wildcats. I think the two best starting fives in basketball, North Carolina and Arizona. Got a close game here between Louisville and Florida. Pacino and Donovan. It's a two-point game. Designed to resist water, dust, snow, imitation. There's no other digital camera like it. Stylus Digital from Olympus. Designed to do more. They are ghosts of the gridiron, and their time has come again now. A new generation has emerged as college football's celebration of excellence writes a new chapter. Who will be next? The 2003 Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Wendy's. Tonight at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Hey, dude, you know me. People ask me all the time, Bob, how do you do it? I tell them, hey, it comes natural to me, offering Louisville the finest Honda cars and trucks for over 31 years. No Honda customer is treated better than at Bob Montgomery's Dixie Honda. We are the only dealership to win the President's Award for Outstanding Customer Satisfaction for the last five years. Bob Montgomery's Dixie Honda, 10 minutes from the airport on Wide, Wide Dixie Highway. I'm Joanne Wolf at CarForce at the Collins Auto Point, where you'll find a fast, fun, and easy way to buy a car, truck, van, or SUV. The prices were great. Couldn't be easier. More fun than a peddler in a long time. And right now, CarForce has power buys at prices you're not going to believe. Like a 2002 Ford Explorer XLT 4x4 for 19788 Or a 2003 Taurus SES for 11488 It's all at CarForce, a whole new world of automotive value. Back here at Freedom Hall in Louisville, Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale, and Doris Burke with you, a two-point lead for the Cardinals as we go over to Doris. Dan, thank you very much. We just want to remind our viewers that today's basketball game is being available on ESPN's high-definition service, ESPN HD, available thanks to Phillips and Best Buy, an unbelievable clarity, increased aspect ratio, and a reminder, folks, that tomorrow night's NFL game, Giants of the Saints, is available. Next Saturday's and next Sunday's NFL telecast, Patriots at Jets and Broncos at Colts is also available, and the vision is unbelievable. It's a great way to watch a college basketball game. And, Dick, you keep talking about your barber. When we do ESPN HD, I feel like I need a quality makeup artist on hand. <laughs> There's a little too much forehead when they put Dick and me on camera on HD, but we'll take what we can get. Two-point lead, Louisville. Look at the zone right now out of the timeout. Look at the zone defensively, Florida. And the first shot is a three by Jenkins that falls short. Francisco Garcia has got 11 points in this game. David Lee, meanwhile, getting it down for Florida. He's got 10. Hey, Lee right now, the ball is rolling down. It did not roll down for him. I mean, the Rowdy Reptiles, were they ready? But the team just didn't respond. And that game against Maryland. Jenkins trying to penetrate the top of the 2-3 zone. Now Mohammed. Nice kick out. Jenkins wide open again. His second consecutive miss on the three. Rashid al Kalim, who checked in about a minute ago, comes down with a rebound for the Gators. Just need a little more patience when you're attacking the zone defensively. Got to get some movement against this man-to-man. -man some ball movement. Get Lee some touches inside. Get some Lee. He really wants it today. They didn't even look inside. Abacar turned his back to the play. And they turned it over. Three on one. Garcia to Muhammad and a foul on Al Kalim. Players don't know how to give and go. He gives the ball up. You got to give it back. And Garcia's got a slam dunk for a layup. Yep. Florida has battled back to a 19-19 tie. Again, Billy Donovan going deeper into his bench 
that we're used to seeing with Abacar getting a lot of minutes, Appleby getting a lot of minutes, Al Kalim on the floor, Walsh and Roberson are getting set to check back in. You know, when you think about the run that Rick Pitino had when he was at Kentucky and what a job he did. 96 winning that national title, beating Syracuse at the Meadowlands. 97, as I said earlier, lost to Dublin, but they played without a superstar, Derek Anderson. Arizona did a great job to beat three number one seeds to win the national title. And then 98 comes in Tubby Smith, and he wins the national title. But I'm going to tell you something. I really believe when you talk about passionate fans, it doesn't get much more passionate than this state. Right here at Louisville and also down in Lexington. Yep, no These fans have such a love affair with their back. Team. You know, the relationship between Patino and Donovan is not just in Providence. Donovan also played for Patino briefly with the New York Knicks, and Donovan was an assistant to Patino for five years at Kentucky. So these guys have been involved in one another's professional lives for many, many years. Walsh misses the three. And Donovan has faced Pacino as head coach versus head coach four times. He got blown out. Yeah, never beaten him. Whitehead, no. Twice when Donovan was at Marshall, and then twice in Donovan's first year at Florida when Pacino was still at Kentucky. Now things have changed. He's got the higher-ranked team when you look at Florida. That's probably not a shot Donovan will like. No passing at about a 24-foot three by Roberson, but they get the long rebound back. He has to learn how to play without the ball. He is great with the ball, Anthony Roberson, but he has to learn how to play without the ball. Florida one for six from three-point range, and they commit another turnover. Garcia, no look pass. The reverse not there for Whitehead. Whitehead's got to convert that one. It was a great look by Garcia. But Florida a little bit fortunate with all the turnovers, the fast breaks by Louisville. The Cardinals could have a bigger lead than they do. Look out. This is getting physical here. And out on the perimeter, the, card, the, the foul will go against Jenkins of the Cardinals. But don't forget, two more great games coming your way. First on ESPN, right after us, it's number seven, Kansas. Shorthanded, to say the least. Andy Katz will have more on that at halftime. They're taking on Luke Jackson and Oregon. And then tonight at 9 Eastern on ESPN2, Memphis with one of the great athletes in the country at Rodney Carney battling number 14, Illinois. Led by D. Brown. No Dervin Williams tonight out with an injury. If you didn't hear that, Andy Katz will have more on that at halftime as well. I can't wait to see that shootout when you and I go to St. Louis for that Missouri-Illinois shootout. Yeah. That's always a special game. You look at Missouri, they're going to get a lot of help now as they get Jason Conley and Randy Pooley to join their other people, and they're really going to count. The question is, how much will that investigation with Ricky Clemens right. affect them? I don't think kids are going to say, they're going to play. They're going to affect the coaches having that on the One-handed rebound by Richard, missed the putback, and now a travel is called on Louisville as Diakade fell to the fell to the ground with the ball. Fifth turnover committed by the Cardinals. I'm really surprised at the scoring totals here at 21-19, making like an Oklahoma and Purdue game yeah. the other day. The bottom line is I thought this would be a higher scoring game. You know, I think a lot of times this season, early in the year, we've seen great efforts by these top teams. But you ask around, it seems that even the top teams, they're not really in a groove yet. Teams are still playing some a sloppy basketball at times. They're just not clicking on all cylinders. They're trying to find their rotation as well, trying to find the five guys. Walsh keeps the pivot for it. The crowd didn't think so. Richard way, way off. David Lee again. Get Lee to basketball. I'm telling you, he's feeling it. You can watch him in the pre-practice situation. His focus. He really was determined to come here today and have a good basketball game after that poor performance the other day against Maryland. Lee's got a dozen. Garcia now sitting down for Louisville with 11 as Larry O'Bannon knocks down a three. And that's why he's earned a lot of playing time. O'Bannon's been giving him a threat from that perimeter. He was a guy at times last year, wasn't playing much at all, but he's become a starter. Now Jenkins, nice play. George Moore and Roberson with a rebound. Oh, that would have been a big bucket for Louisville. Under the momentum creator. Al Kaleen, he's a shooter, knocks down the three. You know, it's amazing. Al Kaleen comes back, knocks down the three. That's a five-point turnaround right there. Yep. Five-point turnaround. He should have a layup on the other end after a good defensive play with their pressure defensively. Many of the Cardinal fans still standing. Louisville getting a lot of their offense off Florida turnovers here today, but we've got a tie game here at Freedom Hall. And here's that 2-3 zone. And they got to be a lot more active than they were against Maryland early in that game. Nate Daniels on the floor. This is him. Nate Daniels, a 6'7", a junior college transfer, known for his shooting ability, knocks down his first look. And he has not been shooting the ball well at all. 
That's why he hasn't had the playing time that they anticipated him to have. You want an offense, Nick. Here it comes. Three-point lead. I'm the fantasy football champion. Yes! Fantasy football champion! Attention, you are all losers. And a sign of victory! Victory over all! All! Hey, boss! You're a loser! ESPN Insider gives you up-to-date info and exclusive content to help you win your fantasy league. How you handle it is up to you. The all-new ESPN Insider. Get inside. He's watching me. All the time. I can't see him. But he's out there. I sense it. On the diamond. On the court. On the track. He pushes himself. To be better than me. Better than me. Better than me. Better than me. To be better than me. Training to beat me. All by himself. He's watched my career. Studied my moves. He knows my game. Knows my strength. Looking for my weakness. I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. But he knows me. Is it you? Welcome to the world where competition never sleeps. The ultimate online battleground where you can take on anyone, anytime, anywhere. This is the EA Sports Nation, and it's only on PlayStation 2. EA Sports. It's in the game. This Christmas... There's a boy here who is the teacher to fly. You're invited on a journey. Don't let go! You'll never forget. There are mermaids. Indians. Pirates. <gasps> Bring me those children! Christmas Day. Caracap Uano here in the ESPN College Basketball Studios. Coming up at the halftime of the game between Florida and Louisville, Andy Katz is courtside. He's got some news about some games coming up involving top 25 teams later today. As well, we will head to New York City for a preview of the Heisman Trophy presentation. Right now, it's back to the game and Dan and Dick. Guy? Back here at Freedom Hall, a three-point lead for Louisville over Florida. Late first half, Francisco Garcia playing with a heavy heart for the second time this week after the death of his brother earlier this week has once again been an outstanding performance. Well, he shows his range as a shooter, man. He's got really downtown range. He shoots this one from Lexington, Kentucky. Nothing but that. Then he shows the ability to move without the basketball. Great movement without the ball, something that a lot of kids do not do. In fact, that's the one part of the game I believe Anthony Roberson has to really work on. How to cut, how to get free without the basketball. He's got dynamite with the ball in his hand. Garcia is just a sophomore, by the way, as Florida turns it over yet again. That's their 10th turnover. And the Cardinals have a dozen points off those Florida turnovers. So Rick Pitino's team is taking advantage of the Gator mistakes, and that's what Louisville wants to do pressure you whether it's full court or half court dick and force turnovers well that's their game that's the style of play rick Petito, very aggressive style likes to utilize the bench look at the turnover ratio two to one man-to-man -man defense by florida trying to take the challenge man-to-man -man. do they have anybody can handle garcia that's the question appleby out roberson back in after that turnover garcia misses the three and now back come the gators led by roberson see he's great with the ball in his hand now he's going to learn to play without it. He stands after he gets. See, right now, he's always terrific. He's going to scream for it. He can really be dynamite with that ball in his hands. He's had a quiet first half after scoring 20 points in the loss to Maryland Wednesday. Walsh into Moss. And the rebound to Diakice. Nice play by Walsh to get the ball inside, but you've got to convert that if you Moss down here. Lee's going to come back into the game for Florida. He's been their best offensive option by a wide margin today. He's really been focused and played well on the interior. Diakite. Everybody was expecting him to pass to Garcia, and he got a clear lane to the bucket. Nobody stepped out. The one really fourth I see defensively for Florida, they do not give help. They do not rotate over when guys beat him. See, watch this right here. You're right here. He's going to take the ball, and he's going to go right to the ball. Look at number 21. Not rotating over. 
He's not coming over. You got to rotate over. You got to give help. You got to close off drive an angle. That's what team defense is, Dan. And they were so worried about Garcia that on the on the pick, both guys went to Garcia and left Diakite, who actually had the basketball. They left him all by himself. See right there. Abacar, freshman's got to rotate over number yeah. 21. You got to give help. You got to see ball, you man. A lot of players watch ball, but they don't see man. Well, I know you felt that when things are going well for Florida, passing, shooting, they can outscore just about anybody to win games. But when it offensive foul on Lee, but when it comes to defense or toughness, that sometimes those are the things that prevent them from being even better than they are. Well, that prevents you from winning big when you get to March Madness because the bottom line is the game becomes more defensive-minded. It becomes more five-on-five. Five. Execution in a half-court game becomes very vital when you get to the postseason. Now, Lee has picked up the foul his second, I believe, but now John Clockerty talking to the officials goes down with a word for Rick Pitino. Pitino didn't like what he heard, but didn't argue what he heard. The signal was definitely an offensive foul on David Lee of Florida. Now we wait for John Clocker to sort out whatever the confusion is about. Yeah, I'm confused about the confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Donovan wants an explanation as well. Billy gets younger and younger looking every time I see him. Must be just married to a beautiful girl, Christine. Take a look right here. I mean, there's the contact. There's the contact with the charge. I mean, you can't be arguing that, right? He called it a charge. It's a charge. Must well, be some other issue. See it right yeah. there. Must be some other issue. Now they've overruled the call. Otis George gets called for a block. Well, I'll tell you what. If you see on the top, you see the official up on top actually calling the charge. Or did we have a double foul? Well, if it's a double foul, then you don't shoot yeah, it. Yeah, it must have been a double foul. Two officials, I guess, simultaneously different calls. Multiple foul yeah. situation. Boy, an unusual situation there. I saw the call for the charge. Yeah. Yeah. Daniels with his second three of the game. I tell you, Daniels has got a lot more playing time. He makes those threes. That's an important part of the Rick Pitino system. Was trying to get away a little here. Halftime getting momentum. Listen to the crowd into it. Lee, give and go. And he's foul. That's what you want to do. Give the basketball. Get it back. Hey, folks. Today on ABC Sports, Tiger Woods, Masters champ Mike Weir, British Open champ Ben Curtis, and VJ Singh had a field of the top 16 golfers on the planet. Don't miss the Target World Challenge presented by Williams. Coverage begins today at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC. And here's the leaderboard after two rounds. Tiger is in the hunt. Just again to get rid of whatever confusion may remain, two officials, Tom Eads and John Clockerty, made different calls on that collision. One had a block, one had a charge. Multiple fouls. So they decided to each have the call, a double foul, and then on the possession arrow, Louisville inbounded the ball. Exactly. Hey, you know, you talk about coaches that have taken two teams to the Final Four. Dick Petito's done it, 11 other guys as well. People such as Larry Brown in Kansas, UCLA. You think about Eddie Sutton in Arkansas and Oklahoma State, Lou Olson, Arizona and Iowa. You think about Lou Henson in Mexico State and Illinois. There's been a number of 11 guys have done that. Rick Pitino could take his fourth, I take four teams to the NCAA yeah. tournament. Well, if you read in the Louisville Media Guide, there's a quote from Dick Vitale about Rick Pitino and his program, and you say, after a couple of years in the program, we'll start recruiting, and he'll have Louisville in the top ten year after year after year. You still feel that way? I still believe that happens starting next year. I don't know about winning national titles, but I think starting next year, you'll see them top ten. He has taken four teams to the NCAA tournament, Boston University, Providence, and Kentucky. And I was absolutely shocked that he could do that at Boston U. The ball's going to stay with the Gators. Another call that the Louisville fans don't like here at Freedom Hall. He's a great teacher and a great motivator. The college game fits his style of play. It fits his personality, his work ethic, his desire of practice. He's a master teacher in a practice environment. They had two practices last night. They started the practice at 9 o'clock last night. Walsh, driving to the bucket, does not get the call on the foul. They kick it out to Avatar, who knocks down a long two. Avatar hits that two. I know. And he busted my, my back about that. When he saw me, he said to me, hey, I knew when you were younger, you'd have been at my 9.30 practice. Instead, you're a porcini eating the dinner with your boy <laughs> Schumann and his buddies. <laughs> 
Now you're living the good life, right? You're 64. Porcini's yeah. mad. I know more about his team than he knows about his team. That's what he teaches <laughs> me, too. Shot clock in the game clock. Just about centered up here for the last 10 seconds now of the half. Louisville will go to the break with a lead over Florida. So It'll be stop. Daniels from 25 feet. A long line drive three. Walsh's desperation try. Nowhere close as the first half comes to an end. Louisville led by Francisco Garcia. Who else? 11 points in the first half. Five rebounds as well. They'll take a five-point lead to the break. Let's go to Doris Burke. Rick, he was playing under extraordinary difficult circumstances, but Garcia has an outstanding half. How was he able to perform that well? He played well. His, his win, when you're that emotional, you lose your conditioning. And he's trying hard to fight through it, but he's a wonderful young man, a terrific player. You called Florida a great offensive team. You held them to 25 points or 27 points. What was so good defensively? Well, I think we're ready for what the pick and rolls are the key. And if you defend their pick and rolls well, you're going to have success. If not, they're going to hit threes. They're going to get inside rollings. But we got to continue. We've got a long way to go. Good luck in the second half. Dan? Doris, thank you very much. Rick Pacino and the Cardinals try to knock off the Florida Gators. Now the halftime show's coming up. Back to the studio. No suffering some family tragedy. Garcia's brother was shot and killed earlier this week. Once again, for the second time this week, he's playing in spite of the tragedy, and he's playing well. Well, he's really playing exceptionally well. I think that's his little escape right there. 94 by 50, and he's responded in a positive way, making threes. We see his range as a shooter. I mean, I cannot believe it, man. That's Lexington, Kentucky style from back there. And he's also done a great job moving without the basketball. Had a big, big first half. Meanwhile, the Florida Gators struggling again, scored just 27 points in the first half. Garcia, the high scorer for Louisville with 11. David Lee, the high scorer in the game with 13. But for the Gators, Christian Dreyer, Anthony Roberson, and Matt Walsh combined to score only four points in the first half. Well, they're going to get a really uh, a lot of emphasis, emphasis on them on a perimeter, just like Gary Williams did. He came out and was going to challenge them on a perimeter, and they really shut down. But after this game, Florida, they're going to have to get point production out of Walsh. Walsh got to get going. He's too good of an offensive player to go over for four. Walsh came into the game averaging better than 15 points per game. Roberson on the drive. Nice dump down to Lee. Nice play. A little two-man game created by the penetration of Roberson. And there's Lee with the good hands and the conversion inside. Lee now with 15. He's got more than a half of the Florida points today. They would just like to have one of those deuces the other night and it'd be number one right now. <laughs> Still the number one ranking, but that will change oh, with the gone. loss to Maryland. That is gone. Garcia, nice dish. Dartez, wide open. Dean for three. Loose ball rebound to Dreyer of Florida. Let's get an update from the Florida Gators side of things. Back to Doris Burke. Well, Dan, Billy Donovan said the low shooting percentage is a function of the familiarity. The both defenses did a very solid job. Asked him about the turnovers. He singled out Matt Walsh. He said he's got to get going and be tied over the basketball, guys. I tell you, Doris, I agree with him. they got to get Matt Walsh going offensively. He's got to get some point production at least. There's another turnover as Dreyer's pass is intercepted. The 12th turnover committed by the Gators. Roberson's done a decent job out here on Dean. Controlled him. Didn't play really tough defense at all against Maryland. O'Bannon driving on Walsh. What a screen set by Dartez. Now Dean with the floater. And Dean, he's got to be able to contain him, control him in his penetration. And oh, double up. Roberson fortunate to get out of it. You want to reverse the basketball. Did a great job of swinging it. Lee again. Nice feed by Dreyer. And it's all David Lee on the inside right now for Florida with 17 points. That was created by the ball reversal. Swinging it from the other side. Getting it away from the trapping area. Garcia the lob. And the finish at the other end for Larry O'Bannon. Larry O'Bannon moving out the basketball. Here comes that full court pressure. Trying to get you into a trapping area. See, right now he's trying to get about four or five feet away and into the trap. And he is there. Oh, uh, it's a field day because they're breaking down the trap on the perimeter and it's creating numbers. I mean, if you've got numbers, you're going to get wide open looks. Lee has 19 of Florida's points. He was one for 12, he said, on the interior against the Turks. Garcia baseline, right head inside, and Dreyer got a piece of it. Thomas got the next one. Dartez is there. Dartez hanging around. 
I mentioned in Greg's junior college where he went to in Indiana. Produced Ricky Green who went to Michigan in the 70s. And Bob McAdoo who went to North Carolina. Louisville 38, Florida 33. Two minutes and 50 seconds into the second half. It's been all David Lee on the inside for Florida. But Louisville trading buckets with them. They're still scoring at the other end as the Gators use a timeout here early in the second half. Five-point lead Louisville here on their home floor against Florida. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. What are you dreaming about this winter? The Mercedes-Benz winter dream has begun with 2.9% APR financing for 36 months on select Mercedes-Benz C, E, M, and S-Class models. So visit your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Actually, it's more like a bouquet. Now, pick up a fresh holiday meal with all the fixings and get a large popcorn chicken free. For Kitchen Fresh Chicken, you got a KFC What's Cooking. here at Freedom Hall, if it weren't for the inside play of David Lee today, the Gators would be right out of this game. He's got 19 of Florida's 33 points. Well, the perimeter players are one for seven. Robinson and Walsh, there's Lee scoring inside. But one of the reasons he's scoring inside like that is because of the passing ability of the people up on top who are breaking traps and really getting open lanes and getting the ball inside. So he's getting wide open looks. I mean, some of those layups I could have made. Come on now. I know I ate a lot last night when we went to Portini, you're, but you're, I could have made that. You're vertical shot. You know, one of, one of the things about Lee, you saw that first shot, that six-footer, he shot that with his right hand. David Lee is left-handed, but right, he broke his arm as a sophomore in high school and learned how to play as a righty, and he's pretty much ambidextrous right now. Yeah, he utilizes either hand really well on the inside. Dreyer, who's been an odd factor here today, finally gets his first points, didn't play much in the first half because of foul trouble. Let's go to Doris. David Lee, a different guy physically this season. He went home to St. Louis, worked with a nutritionist and strength coach, cut his body fat from 12 to 7 percent. He said, the biggest thing I did, I stayed away from fast food. He looks like a completely different player, Dan. I'll tell you one thing, Doris, I like to cut my body fat to about 28 <laughs> percent. Just committed the foul. It was called for the foul that he didn't agree with. He's about 15 pounds heavier, yet he's cut his body fat down. Third foul committed by Lee, and now he's going to come out, and Moss will come in. So let's see how Florida adjusts offensively right now. Yeah, to play without Lee now with that third foul, that could be major because he's having a monster game on the interior. Whitehead left wide open on the inbound play. Missed the 15 footer, but runs down the rebound, and it pays off as Dean knocks down the three. Boy, they love shooting the three. I mean, they work on that in practice. They have all kinds of shooting drills related to the three point shot. Uh, he's a trapping area, going to reverse the ball. You don't want to bring it back to the same side of the trapping area. You want to go opposite. Walsh doing the ball handling on this possession as they try to get Roberson free for a jumper. They're going to get Walsh free. He's going to start moving without the ball. He's wide open. He's got to convert one. Now Garcia recovers. Walsh lost the three over him. Rebound Dean. 
That's David with Lee. This game, it's Walsh. You've got to have all cylinders working if you want to win on a major college level. Walsh is 0 for 5 as Dean is called for a travel and will step aside. A timeout on the floor. Louisville up by 6. this winter. The Mercedes-Benz winter dream has begun with 2.9% APR financing for 36 months on select Mercedes-Benz C, E, M, and S-Class models. So visit your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. When you describe my game, you'll need words like, Woo! You need words like, Ah! Ooh. You'll need words like, Ah! Dang. Ah! My name's Paul. Fifth. Carmelo. I create, I create, I create adjectives. NBA Live 2004 with freestyle. Ready to for everyone. I create with freestyle. Freestyle. EA Sports. It's in the game. Come away. Come away to Neverland. It's Christmas. There are mermaids. Indian. Pirates. <laughs> to a place Sing me those children. where anything is possible. Brace yourselves, lad. <laughs> Peter Pan, Rated PG. At theater's Christmas Day. Did you catch the game last night? Great game. Yeah. Hey, what'd you have to eat? Mmm, pound of beer-battered chicken strips. And cheese fries. You? Oh, watercress tea sandwich with, with just a sprig of parsley. Should add a new Hungry Man Sports Grill. A whole pound of the sports grill grub men love. Hungry Man, it's good to be full. Take a look at the action. Number 10, Georgia Tech, taking on St. Louis at Phillips Arena. This is the Peach Bowl Classic. B.J. Elder, one of four Yellow Jackets, averaging in double figures. He sinks to three. His team up by three. So Brad Soderbergh's Billikens down. Meantime, the team he used to coach, Wisconsin, is up 58-47. Wisconsin taking on Marquette next Saturday. Guys? I love that Wisconsin team, Sarah. I really think they are threat again for that Big Ten title. Devin Harris, one of the most underrated players in America. Kid Owens is outstanding. And Georgia Tech is no fluke. Even though St. Louis, I'm going to tell you, is a tough basketball team. Hey, Matt Walsh, they cannot win. I'm telling you, partner, Mr. Schumann, write this down what I'm saying. They cannot win unless he gets going. 0 for 5, he's too vital to their offensive system. Walsh has to start putting some points on the board for Florida to win this game this afternoon. And again, David Lee, who's been the only offensive force for Florida today with the 19 points, as Dartez of Louisville is called for the foul. That will be his first. Lee's on the bench with three fouls right now. He's got 19 points. The rest of the Gators only have 16 combined. Talk about the Gators. What a great athletic program. German oh, Bull is the kind of AD you'd like working for. You get Billy Donovan, that mega mega contract, 1.7 mil. But it's more than just football, basketball. They're volleyball team. The women's yeah. team number three in America. That's how Dean Kier telling you about that, right? Yeah. Dreyer on the drive. Yeah, Dreyer with that drive for the goal. Scores. Mary Weiss is the coach. Her husband, Mark, does the color with Nick Hubert. Not here today to support his wife. As you look at the shooting totals right here, they're number three. If they win tonight, they go to the Final Four in Dallas, their women's volleyball team. Gators back to the four. They are the number one ranked team in the country at the moment, but they lost to Maryland on a Wednesday, so they'll lose the ranking. How did Garcia possibly find room in the paint to make that shot? I mean, that looks like impossible. That's the Walsh. trap. Yep. Got to push somebody in the middle. Somebody got to post up strong. Walsh steps through, turns it over. Late posting up. Without Lee on the floor, they really don't have the kind of post presence that he provides. And I know you, you've talked about this a lot. Billy Donovan's team, they knew this kind of pressure was coming, but it's tough to simulate this pressure in practice, right? Exactly. You've got to be able to meet it. It's a different timing. You practice, you're watching videos. Abacar into the game, and Roberson will go out. So now Dreyer will become the primary point guard on the floor for the Florida Gators. I don't know, the Gators don't look like a happy group of guys in terms of, I, I don't see that real spirit. 
Dean misses the three. Rebound Abacar. I mean, they seem to be very passive. They don't seem to be playing with a spark that you'd like to see out of kids that are rated so high. What did you think of them when you saw them do the game against Arizona, which they won? Well, they played there, I thought, with spark. I mean, I thought they had fire. I think they're a little bit down after that loss to Maryland. Polis count the bucket. Louisville, meanwhile, is 3-1 and one on the season. Their loss was in their first game, which was to Iowa. They have three wins since then, including a win over Seton Hall this week. See, they're playing hard. There's no doubt they're playing hard. But I think they're thinking. I think they're a little bit really concerned. You're talking okay. about Florida? Yeah, they're yeah. trying to impress their coach. They're trying to impress their coach and do everything right, and they're just not playing with that kind of contentment that you like to see, that freedom that you like to see. Well, Billy Donovan says there's no better test for road games in the SEC than coming up here to Freedom Hall and playing a tough team like Louisville. It's going to be a physical game, a hard-fought game, the kind of game they'll see in conference play. Dean on the drive, follow no good. And a loose ball to Walsh. I mean, it'd be a great win for them to get this win here after losing to Maryland, coming on a road. It's certainly a test, but I think they're all thinking on every play rather than just reacting with play. Dreyer's had a couple of buckets here in the second half. Finds a wide open boss for three. Loose ball rebound to Dreyer, who is tripped to the floor. No foul, no travel. Play on. Now he throws it away. No post presence inside but out late. I don't think the right word was happy as much as thinking and everything. 14th turnover committed by the Gators. Now good up defense by Moss on Garcia. And Garcia blows right by him. And then Garcia misses the layup. I mean, Garcia is so good. He's talking to Rick Bolson. He's a fine columnist here. But he's also a great kid as well. They got two outstanding columnists. So I always love shooting a breeze with Pat Forty and Rick Bolson. Look at that change of direction. He splits the defense. You got to catch and convert here. Nice play by okay. Garcia. What a move by Francisco Garcia. Just a sophomore. Still rail thin. He's only about 210 pounds. He's 6'7". But Rick Pitino says with another year of experience and a little more strength, he's got a chance to be one of the best players around. Oh, well, there's no doubt. I think right now he's becoming one of the better players in America, especially when you talk about slashers, and there's a lot of good slashers in the game. Guys on the wing. 13 for Garcia to lead Louisville. Now they swing it around beautifully, and Ty Quan Dean knocks down the three. It's so great when you see a team reverse the ball. It's the way they practice their half-court set. Swing the ball for the open shot. Walsh gets it back from Richard, misses the three. He's cold today, and the ball belongs to Louisville. He is frigid like the weather outside. Mr. <laughs> Walsh just can't get going, but they did a great job reversing the basketball. Watch it right here. Frigid. Is that a swing this ball? They swing that ball. Watch it. Now they swing it. They swing it to Mr. Dean. Count it. Count it again. Garcia, and he is fouled. And the fans are on their feet here at Freedom Hall. He's the focal point. He's the nucleus of this club. It goes through Mr. Garcia. And swinging the ball. Look at him attack the basket. He's not just a three-point shooter. Some guys are one-dimensional. This kid is not one-dimensional. And remember, as you said so well, Dan, he's playing with a heavy heart here today. Yeah, let's remember again, as we mentioned off the top of the show and in the first half, that Garcia's brother was shot and killed Monday night in the Bronx and Garcia decided to play on Wednesday against Seton Hall matched his career high with 24 points and Garcia and Rick Pitino flew to New York yesterday for a memorial service and to be with family they flew back Thursday night and Rick Pitino again tried to talk Garcia out of playing saying there's too much going on take some time for yourself your family but Garcia said I want to be here for my team and I want to play and he is playing great again today. Because that 94 by 50 has escaped from all the problems yeah. until he gets alone again. Let's go to Doris Burke. Well, Dan, remarkably, this is a young man that was not well known in the recruiting circles. Grew up in Columbia, and it wasn't until he went into Wichenden Academy that he was finally seen. But at that point, Rick Pitino had had his work done. This is a guy that was not highly recruited, yet great skills. I tell you, Doris, if you can play, Mr. Pitino's going to find you. His buddy, by the way, Curtis Sumter from out of New York, got 39 yesterday for Villanova. And Villanova, he's playing really well for the club. David Lee, the only offensive weapon really today for Florida. You know, we talk about Garcia wanting to come back here to be with his other family, his Louisville family. And, of course, Rick Pitino 
uh, and his wife Joanne have gone through some personal tragedy with Billy Minardi, his brother-in-law and best friend, dying on 9-11, and that's the reason for this game. This is the Billy Minardi Classic. Taekwon Dean, who is Francisco Garcia's best friend, lost his mother at a very young age, so he's got some people around him here, Dick, who I would think would be able to offer a lot of emotional support. Because they have gone through it. Yeah. It's a whole different ball game. Boy, look at Florida. I mean, sloppy basketball, 15 turnovers, just not getting out on the shooters on defense. This does not look like the Florida Gator team many people expected to see uh, before the season, early this season. Right open shot, Dick. But I'll tell you right now, no defense right there. Wide open look. Everybody went to the basketball. Inside, outside action. And they get the big three. Largest lead of the game for Louisville. Remember this far, the team lost a lot of talent last year as Robinson knocks that down. I don't think people really understand when you lose a Bonner and lose a Nelson and then the glue the was Justin yep. Hamilton. I mean, that's a lot of talent. As we celebrate our 25 seasons of college basketball, time to flash back into the ESPN archives. A six-foot senior from Rockville Center, Long Island, number 34, Billy Donovan. Rick Pitino is the maestro here. Pitino needs a series of three-pointers. There's one of them. Donovan. Now Pitino and John going chin to chin, just like they're players. We're coming down the cases for the win. It's Lewis again. It's all over. And you like to see that. Rick Pacino and Billy Donovan beating Georgetown. That got him into the Elite Eight. That game was right here at Freedom Hall. Then they beat Alabama to go to the Final Four together in 1987. The point guard on the women's team in 1987 was none other than Doris Burke. Doris. It was a special year to be a Friar, certainly. I think just a glimpse. I was Pacino's nanny for six weeks when he first took the job. In those six weeks, guys, I didn't see him sit down for more than two minutes at a clip. So Doris took care of the Patino kid. Did he, Doris, did he pay well? Were they well behaved? Let's get some inside dirt on Patino here. Well, he told the media yesterday I actually got paid better then than I do working for ESPN at this point. Oh, oh wait a minute. They told me I had to take a cut and pay with all the cash you're getting. Nine-point lead for Patino and Louisville over Donovan and Florida here in the Billy Minardi Classic at Freedom Hall. You mentioned that 87. That was the year the Hoosiers cut the next down with Steve Alford. It's all about moving the basketball, getting in the right spot, spacing up, playing hard on the defensive end, alternate possession. Dean with his third three of the game. Again, it's a double-figure lead for the Cards. And for you, sir? Well, <laughs> the usual. Come on, try something new. <laughs> like Olive Garden's new stuffed chicken marsala. Stuffed with four Italian cheeses and sun-dried tomatoes, topped with a creamy marsala sauce. I think I've got a new usual. Olive Garden, <laughs> when you're here, you're family. From the director of Blade, Outcasts, Rebels, Renegades. I'm waiting to be impressed. Together, they're in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Buy the DVD Tuesday. Cheers. They are ghosts of the gridiron, and their time has come again now. A new generation has emerged as college football's celebration of excellence writes a new chapter. Who will be next? The 2003 Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Wendy's. Tonight at 8 Eastern on ESPN. With Inside Digital Cable Service, if you love a good workout whenever you want, personal trainer on MagRack is your fitness spot. Let's get ready to rock and roll. Take high-energy aerobic classes. Get professional training advice in your home anytime you're ready. And MagRack has more to move you. 20 video magazines, yours at the touch of a button. MagRack, available on demand on Inside Digital Cable Service. Call today. I pronounce your husband and wife. The Trace Del Brides Pendant from Davis Jewelers. A three stone diamond gift from a groom to the love of his life. Or even a husband to give to his bride of 19 years. Celebrate your past, present, and future. Trace Del from Davis Jewelers. It's diamonds she loves to wear. 
Welcome back. Number 10, Georgia Tech taking on St. Louis at Phillips Arena in Atlanta. Jarrett Jack is the man who's going to hit the shot with time winding down. And it is the Yellow Jackets with a 32-29 edge at the break there. Meantime, Oregon Ducks looking to start 4-0 for a fourth straight year. To do it, Luke Jackson and company will have to beat number 7, Kansas. That's game two of our early doubleheader. Guy? Sarah, thank you. Michael Lee out for Kansas because of injury. Jeff Graves out for Kansas because of suspension here. Louisville up 12 points on Florida. They're four of six, the cards are, from three-point range here in the second half. Hey, I'll tell you, Dan, when you play an aggressive basketball, three things usually happy. Happens with blocking shots, you force of turnovers, or steal. And right now, Luga has ten steals to only one for Florida. That tells you about the style of play and how aggressive they're playing. And one of the things they track here at Freedom Hall, because of Rick Pitino, and it's up on the scoreboard, the fans can see it. Hustle stats, rebounds, steals, blocks, things like that. All the things that you're talking about Roberson with a very big made three for the Gators. They have to get Roberson and Walsh going right now. The edge has gone to Dean and Garcia. They're 11 for 21 in this game thus far. David Lee with 20 points for Florida. Walsh, Roberson, and Dreyer have been pretty quiet most of the day. Garcia finds Whitehead who lays it in. Garcia created out his quickness. Too quick for Dreyer. Just beats Dreyer off the dribble and gets the ball to the interior. Remember, Florida Dick was down 17 in the second half to Maryland Wednesday. Got it all the way back to a tie. Got it to overtime. Took a four-point lead in overtime before finally succumbing to the Turks. Abicar with a foot on the line. This is the jumper. Rebound O'Bannon. You see the little edge, the bounce seems to be going right now to Louisville. Their body language, they seem to be much more active. Is that a home court thing or just the way they're feeling about themselves? Well, they're right playing now? really well. They feel good the way they're moving the ball, as you said, four for six. And plus, they got this guy, man. He is special. He is special. Forget about it. He's going to be a great player. He is a great player. That's a steal. They just not hustling, man. They're yeah. flat out hustling Florida. It's as simple as can be. They wanted a lot more. They are playing much more aggressively. They want the game a heck of a lot more than the Gators do. Well, and you said and you feel this very same things happened Wednesday against Maryland. Billy Donovan became a great player and has become a great coach because of his effort, because of his intensity. How does he get his players to mirror that intensity when they're out on the floor? Well, that's what's got to happen in practice. You've got to be able to get these guys to focus. I think right now they're all waiting for somebody to carry them and pick them up, and they're just not getting it. Their stars are not responding. Apple will be back into the game now for the Gators as they go small. The three is off for Dean. He's already hit three of them here today, and it's out of bounds to Florida. I could understand now why all the coaches, the people on the end, picked Mr. Garcia as the preseason player of the year in a conference USA. He is so much better a player now than he was last year. Last year, a part-time starter averaged about 11 points per game. Comes into action today, averaging 19 points per game and shooting 44% from three. But as you said, he's not just a shooter. Oh, he's a driver, a slasher, passes the ball really well. There's a touch foul out of the perimeter on Alhaji Mohammed of Louisville. Gators are going to have to find themselves, and maybe they're totally overrated, but the bottom line is, when you get into the SEC, we haven't even talked South Carolina's 8-0 right now. Auburn's having a heck of a year on the Cliff Ellis with some good wins. They haven't lost. LSU's going to be very tough. Mississippi State with Lawrence Roberts, certainly a club that's dangerous. And we certainly know about Kentucky, who, by the way, has a date today. 75,000 plus at Ford Field against Michigan State. And if Kentucky wins that game, they will run away. They'll be the new number one. They're number two right now, but the Gators are going to drop out of that spot. Roberson to Colas. And the loose ball is going to come up with it. Still loose, and Florida gets it. Look out, bodies everywhere. And a foul is called against Daniels of Louisville. Well, next that, four minutes so big for the Gators. They got to get a run going in the next four to go to the last five minutes with a chance to win. Those bodies grabbing one another. Daniels called for the foul. Florida retains possession. Oh, he got bumped right there. No call. Walsh is having to work just like against Maryland for every inch of territory on the floor here today. And he has to burn a timeout. Have no movement offensively. Everybody's standing and watching. Everybody's the Kodak man. Let's take pictures. Let's watch. 
Tonight, ESPN has the Heisman Trophy presentation for you, presented by Wendy's at 8 Eastern. The show begins with Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, and Mark May live from Grand Central Station. And then Reese joins Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit at the Yale Club for live interviews with the Heisman finalists, their family members, and coaches. Will it be White? Will it be Manning? Will it be Fitzgerald? Or will it be Perry? Find out tonight on ESPN. Well, you talked about everybody's the Kodak man for Florida. How much credit do the Louisville kids and the way they're playing defense, how much credit do they get for disrupting Florida's offense? Oh, they get a lot of credit. They're playing very aggressively. They're playing active. Florida came out here with a purpose and they were focused. I was in the locker room before the game. Billy Donovan had him ready to play. It's just that they got down on themselves when they got behind and everybody started to think rather than just play. Ball is no rebound Louisville. It's still a 13-point deficit for the Florida Gators in danger of losing their second game in a row. And they've had no one at all. It's been an m and man, a mismatch trying to handle Garcia. Beams had a big second half, gets Roberson in the air, and turns it over. Good anticipation by Lee on the steal. Roberson nowhere to go at the other end, but he draws the foul. See, that's where he's at his best. He's at his best pounding the ball to the deck and taking it to the goal. And everybody ends up watching him play, but he's a talented player. He just has to really work, look at film, evaluate himself without the ball. He should watch himself when the ball is not in his hands and find out how he can become much more efficient. Third foul on Otis George. 15 foul committed by Louisville here this half. The Gators have committed only two. This is a shooting foul, so two shots for Anthony Roberson. Just a sophomore out of Saginaw, Michigan. And again, a position change for him this year. Going from shooting guard to point guard. A lot of responsibility for a guy who's not used to being a point guard to try to lead one of the best teams in the country. I think he has a tendency when things don't go well, he gets really down on himself, and it starts to affect him. You can see it in his body language. He's a kid with a lot of talent. He should have a lot of confidence in his game. Now Kaleem and the boss have come back into the game along with Richard now for the Gators. Both teams struggling from the line. The Gators have to understand the current crop of Gators. What Billy Donovan has built has given them so much in the world of expectations. Now to live up to those expectations, you got to play at a fever pitch. I mean, everybody's coming after them. I mean, they're a target. And the nucleus of their team really is the sophomore class. Three sophomores along with Lee, the junior. What a drive. Now, let me ask you this. She said, what a drive. But where's the defense? Yeah, you're right. Nobody at all rotates over. Nobody closes angles. Right to the goal, unmolested. They've been, that's been happening on the inside. They've also been leaving three-point shooters alone on the outside. So they've had problems defensively inside and outside. And to be a great basketball team, you've got to defend as a unit, as a team. 14-point lead now for Louisville. Under eight minutes to play, Dreyer gets free, misses the 12-footer, rebound for Richard. See, that's what Richard can do really well. Give him muscle inside, size inside. That's his strength. Play around the basket, convert on the offensive board. This game's not out of, out of whack right now. Nope. I mean, they've got a chance yet if they can really get some stops going. When they click, they can score in a hurry, but you're right, they've got to get some stops. They do there, and Walsh brings down the rebound. They've got to get stops, and they've got to get Walsh going. Has the score for the field yet? Amen. Averaging better than 15 points per game. Calling for the ball. They go inside the boss. He scores. Here comes a little spurt, maybe, out of the Gators. But if they're going to make it happen, they got to do it on the defensive side. they got to guard people. Here comes the pressure as they extend a little Good bit. timeout. Yeah. Rick Pitino calls a timeout for Louisville. What a resume he's got. Started as assistant in Hawaii, then at Syracuse with Jimmy Bayheim, head coach of BU for five years, the Nixon assistant, worked with UB Brown, who's doing a phenomenal job with the Memphis Grizzlies, then at Providence as a head coach, Nick's head coach. I mean, it's unbelievable. Kentucky, what a resume he has. And he's yeah. still young. He still looks about he 25. Now coaching against his protege, Billy Donovan, who's got to be unhappy, as you so accurately pointed out, with the lack of defense being played by the Florida Gators. They reversed the ball against a little trap. Now watch this. One pass, go right to the basket, split two guys, nobody rotates over. See, no rotation to close off the driving angle at all. Let's go to Doris Burke. Well, Dick and Dan, it, the similarities between the University of Kentucky's resurgence and the University of Louisville's resurgence is remarkable. Remember, year one at both places, overachievers, feel-good seasons. Year two, Bettino's able to get Kentucky and Louisville over the 20-win mark. They're going to get a bucket here. Hey, easy, guys. And then year three, as Garcia gets out, or excuse me, Whitehead gets out again. Year three, guys. He precedes that year with a great recruiting class, as he does here with Louisville and Dick, they get
get to the Final Four in his third season behind Jamal Mashburn. We're a ways away from that, Dick, but what do you think about the possibilities of this team coming around in March? I'll tell you one thing, a very dangerous basketball team. I still think they're a little bit short on the interior. I agree with you. I think next year they're going to be dynamite. I'll tell you, Doris, it doesn't shock me. I think he is one of the real geniuses in the game of basketball. I really mean that when I'm talking Rick Pitino. I think had he stayed in the collegiate game, he would possibly be up for Hall of Fame honors by now, like Mike Shizetsky. Agreed. Well, one of the reasons they're a little bit thin on the interior, Alice Miles, who tore up his knee in a game last year, has decided to redshirt this season to get fully healthy and will be back as a senior next year with that great recruiting class. Offensive foul against the Florida Gators will take us to break. How about Luke Whitehead trying to make up for the loss of Miles inside with the acrobatic reverse. 12 point lead for the Cards. Shave with Norelco Advantage with moisturizing gel. It prevents nicks and cuts. Use Spectra and you can personalize it for comfort. So now there are two ways to achieve close shaving satisfaction. As you can see. Ultra close, ultra comfortable. Guaranteed. Exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by NikeGridiron.com. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Right down Santa Claus Lane. He's in the holiday da, spirit. Da, da, da. Here comes Santa Claus. Da, da, da. Why don't you go out and dance like hey, that? Why don't, why don't you, you go out there? What are you going to get me for Christmas? You I better buy me I a can't tell you. I will get you <laughs> something. I can't tell you before. For the guy who has everything, what am oh, I going to yeah. get him for Christmas? Well, we talked about these Florida Gators. Right now, what Billy Donovan wants for Christmas is a little bit better defense, right? I mean, it's really hurting them. How good is this team? How good can they be in a couple of months? Well, you know, I think the bottom line is they got to lock up on a defensive end, and they got to find a way to get a little more rhythm offensively. It's not there right now. I look at the SEC, and it still goes through Lexington, Kentucky, man. Kentucky, to me, still is where you got to get through there. And then you throw in a host of teams with so much balance. I mean, I talked earlier about the Auburns and Mississippi States and the LSUs and the South Carolina. Carolinas, those teams haven't lost yet. I mean, it's going to be a very tough year for Florida unless they get back to the classroom and really listen to their coach and understand you play defense as a team. You can't have guys making unblessed drives to the goal and nobody helping out. Garcia, again, the feet inside and another foul. That's a play that Louisville has run eight or ten times today and always the drivers making the extra pass and they're they're getting to the line they have no idea on how to help and recover see give help now and somebody's got to recover rotate over you guys need to help to one another you got to support each other that's what support defense is all about Garcia made the feed and Kendall D'Artez will go to the line for Louisville you know, I use the term genius when I talk about Rick Pitino. When you see him talk basketball and talk the art of coaching to him, it is absolutely a clinic. He has such a complete understanding of every phase, of every phase of the game, whether it be the recruiting end of it, whether it be the coaching end of it, managing the clock. He covers every possible angle. He's brilliant at a clinic. Well, Danny Crum 
and, and Louisville what decided a job to part ways. Yeah, they, I mean, full of favor. A couple of national championships, and they decided to part ways. The AD said, "I got to hit a home run. I got to get Louisville basketball back on the map." Pacino's not only a home run; he's a grand slam. Yeah, he's, he's, he's right up there with anybody. He definitely hit a grand slam, man. There's no question. An a Rod Lord. Over. Mendel D'Artez with the block, and now Garcia says, hey, we got the lead, we got the ball. That's smart. See, good basketball IQ. Tom George certainly deserves a lot of credit for bringing Rick Pitino here, because I'm telling you, he was really concerned about the possible backlash of the people in Lexington, where he had such a great love affair. And, and uh, Louisville and Kentucky play once a year. This year's game is in Lexington, not a day that Rick Pitino really looks forward to. Garcia in traffic, fortunate to get it back. And Florida takes over. That's probably the first bad play he's made all day. Walsh, trying to throw it, pushes off with the left hand, misses the shot. He's taking a stride right now. Yeah. He's got going for about seven. Has not hit from the field today. Mohamed, and a block by Walsh. Great recovery at the defensive end. Yeah, Walsh did a great job hustling. You got to credit the kid with the great hustle. Sensational hustle play to get back there with that block. Rebound for David Lee. Walsh is exactly as you said, Dick. 0 for 7 from the floor. Dreyer with the pull-up. Not there. Richard with the rebound. Dreyer's passing up over three. He doesn't want to shoot the ball right now. No confidence. Lee had it blocked. Defensive aggressiveness. It starts with forcing turnovers, deflections, block shots, steals. What a nice staff that Pitino has. He has Ralph Willard's son. Bethany has also on his staff Reggie Theus, outstanding former player who I think is destined to be a head coach. Vince Taylor as well. Vince Taylor is brilliant. Played at Duke, was a heck of a player from out of here in Kentucky. Under five minutes to go. Still a pretty healthy lead for Louisville. Look at the move by Garcia. Big time, my friends. He's a PT peer. I'm telling you, he's a PT peer playing for a heavy heart. Yeah. They get caught. David Lee gets behind the defense. Look at you. Not happy about that. Just think about it. He lost his brother on Monday. Come down in the lobby of an apartment complex. And yet he comes back and has a brilliant performance on Wednesday and today after going home to be at the service for his brother. This is the three. Rebound Dreyer. Garcia had 24 Wednesday against Seton Hall. He's got 20 today. Rick Pitino was very high on that Seton Hall team. He's not going to like that. I'll tell you right. Rick Pitino's not going to like that defense. Abacar inside scores and draws the foul. Folks, ESPN HD is made possible with the help of our friends at Phillips and Best Buy. Tomorrow night at 8.30 Eastern, NFL action, the Giants and Saints are in HD. And then next Saturday, the Patriots and Jets are in ESPN HD as well. Well, in 1980, you know, you mentioned certainly Denny Crum in the 80s. They were the, one of the dominant programs right. along with Duke. And you think right now, maybe they win that national title. They beat Iowa's team, Lute Olsen in the semis, UCLA in the finals. They had Darrell Griffin. They had Jerry Eves, Wiley Brown, who's on their staff as a strength coach here as well. And then you think about their team in 86 with Never Nervous, Purvis Ellison, Milt Wagner, and Billy Thompson. Wagner now working for John Calipari Great teams. Memphis. Great team. Here's Taekwon Dean back into the game after a long rest for Louisville. We near the four-minute mark. The Cardinals with the ball and a ten-point lead trying to hand the Gators their second loss this week. Trying to take some time off. Look at the backdoor pass. Dean right under the basket, but what a feed from Otis George. They're really executing so well in their half-court offense. Moving the basketball. They got a date coming up with undefeated Murray State. His former assistant, Mick Cronin, who has two tough games coming up with Southern Illinois and Pittsburgh, has done a great job at Murray State as you look at Mr. Pacino with the sideline. And they'll have some tough games at conference, too, with the likes of Cincinnati and Marquette. Cincinnati, I think, could be a outstanding. I don't want to use the word dominant yet, but I'm telling you, the Cincinnati team, when they get white in their lineup, the former Florida Gator, and he becomes eligible to play, which happens any day now, I'm telling you, they are going to go up a level. They're going to get back their big guy, Robert Whaley, from surgery. Can Florida pull off a big-time comeback? Less than four minutes to go. XM Satellite Radio. Point, Carol. 100 digital channels you'll never want to be without. 
Sam. With music, news, sports, and talk, many commercial free, it's the perfect holiday gift. XM Satellite Radio. ESPN presents. You stay down and now you explode. Basketball fundamentals with coach Rick Pitino. It's a discipline, an organized plan of attack. Learn to improve your offensive game from one of the best in college coaching today. Go through the foul with this highly focused, personal one hour workout. You got to be ball tough. You got to show it and be aggressive with the ball. To order, call 1 800 463 3399 or go online at www.patinovideo.com. It's the key to reaching your potential. I could say one thing to Warren Sapp. He doesn't care what you think. Do you know that? What? This isn't interesting to hey, you? Hey, it's the Bucks. Sapp, come on, don't. Dallas Mavericks. Personal PTI on ESPN Insider. Watch the topic you want when you want. The all-new ESPN Insider. Get inside. As security inspectors here at the factory, it's our job to filter out all of the ego, arrogance, and selfish play from hockey. Good say we have the most important job here. But that would be arrogant. The NHL on ESPN. Caring and sharing for the basketball will get you wins in Georgia Tech. Watch the ball movement on this play in transition. A little touch pass to Clarence Moore with the finish. Yellow Jackets starting to pull away, looking to open up the season 8-0. Meantime, Aaron Miles, the Portland product, will face Oregon, Kansas, and Oregon tipping off at Kemper Arena at 2.08 Eastern. Guys? Carol, looking forward to that one. Rick Pacino was looking forward to this one, getting a chance to coach against Billy Donovan. Donovan, again, remember, 0-4 in his head coaching career against Pacino twice when he was at Marshall. Donovan was, and twice in his first year with Florida, where Pacino, of course, was still in Kentucky. It looks like he's going to drop to 0-5 against his mentor, unless the Gators get it going in a hurry. And this is much more impressive for Rick Pacino because right now he's played against a much stronger opponent than what Billy Donovan had in the past. Walsh, 0 for 8 from the field. Lee, dumped down inside, and Kohler's with a miss. Carter's really got to regroup. They've got to find themselves. They are really, absolutely, right now, a trouble basketball team. Well, Bannon's three won't stay down, and we've got a foul against Louisville. And when I'm saying trouble basketball team, I'm talking about a team that's charted into the top five in America after their performance at home against Maryland and right here against Louisville. He wants to finish the play here. They're going to walk the floor and shoot free throws at this end as the Gators will go to the line. And one thing the Cardinals don't want to do is stop the clock is when El Polis goes to the line for Florida. Louisville not shooting free throws well. The reason they're leading this game they have forced 10 more turnovers than the Gators have, and they've got 17 more points off turnovers than the Gators have. And that is the fact that you are now forcing the tempo, and you're playing much more aggressively. Remember, with Patino right now, to get his 400th win, which would match the same time frame that it took the general Robert Montgomery Knight to get his 400 win, 545 games. And you made a great point. If not for the stint with the Celtics oh, he's and the Hall of Fame. Yeah, if he's a college coach his entire career, he's, he's a got Hall of, Hall of Fame for this. There's no doubt about it. And he still might have them in a few years. The WZ with a post for Dennis Kentucky would be in front. Garcia. He has had a very big game for Louisville with 20 points, five rebounds, four assists, and four steals. And again, just a few days after the death of his brother, a really courageous effort by Francisco Garcia to lead his team for the second time this week. they got to watch out. They're really conservative. It's down to three possessions, nine points. The way Florida can get hot shooting threes. Here, steal, gamble by Roberson. But you've got to make it happen defensively. O'Bannon, no. Rebound, Florida. Too quick of a shot. Yeah, too quick right there. You want to manage the clock. You want to manage time. Roberson picks it out to Dreyer for three. It's a six-point game. Nothing like the three-point shot that can change the complexion all of a sudden. Penetration. Boy, that did out. not take long at all. You know, we've talked about so many times. I was talking to Billy Donovan before the game about it. Understanding score, time, and strategy. There it is. Kicking it back out. 
You and I have witnessed it so many games this year. You and I, it's about our 14, 15 already. game already yeah, we've done. But we have, we've seen so many situations where players just have no clue what the time of the game or what the score is. Tonight, ESPN has the Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Wendy's at 8 Eastern. It begins with Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, and Mark May for Grand Central. And then Reese will join Chris Lee and Kirk in the Yale Club for live interviews. Will it be White, Manning, Fitzgerald, or Perry? The Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Wendy's tonight at 8 right here on ESPN. You know, you can't allow yourself consistently to get behind gloves like there was 17 down against Maryland, down here big, and then constantly try to fight and fight and get back. Good job. Back block with number 15. Now see, take a look right here. Patino at 51 years of age, going for his 400th win. Bobby got it at right there at age 44. What an amazing career. I know a lot of people don't agree. I've said it once and I'll say it again. They should name that assembly center slash the Robert Montgomery Knight Center for what he achieved and all the things he did in a positive way for Indiana basketball. You can see the run for the Gators. We're down to two minutes as Louisville tries to milk the clock a little bit also, run some offense and get some points up on the board and Whitehead dribbled it right over to Moss. And they got to make free throws as well. Good defensive stop by the Gators. Now you got to find your three-point shooters. I mean, Walsh is due, man. He's due to make the shot. Roberson on the drive. Still diving for it, and Taekwon Dean got the ball and called a timeout. Great hustle, though, by the Florida Gators in that sequence. Billy would like to see that for 40 minutes, the kind of hustle they're demonstrating there. By the way, you saw that Oregon and Kansas are coming up next year on ESPN. The tip is seven minutes away, so unless this game goes to overtime, we'll get you there in time for the opening tip. Well, our guy John Madden would love this, man. Look at this right here. Look at Diamond hustling, scrapping. I mean, that's football, baby. That's getting ready for Super Bowl action. <laughs> And Dean is the guy who comes up with the ball and gets the timeout called. Again, Oregon and Kansas coming up next. Can Kansas survive the loss not only of Michael Lee out with a broken collarbone, but as Andy Katz told us at halftime, and you talked about Jeff Graves suspended, did not show up at practice yesterday. Wow. And uh, an, an, already, no -no. an already thin Kansas team even thinner, and you're just wondering what's going on with Graves. Such an opportunity for him with this Kansas team. Well, I can tell you what's going on, and I'm not even there to see the situation as you look at the hustle. It's very simple. David Padgett arrives, playing time's taken away, so now you want to show your coach how valuable you are, so you pout, you sulk, and you miss practice. I mean, that is immaturity at its highest level. Louisville with the ball, up six, a minute 37 to go. One timeout remains for both teams. The Gators at one point were down 15. They were down 17 to Maryland on Wednesday, forced overtime, eventually lost. They were down 15 here in the second half to Louisville. They've got it down to six. Oh, wide open Make layup. It. Wide open layup. Nobody playing defense. I mean, you can go through there. Simple layup. Tough to come back if you don't defend. Look at the defense. Look at how Dean is pounding Dreyer. Yeah, he's playing like he's eight down instead of eight up. Dreyer to look inside. Nice feed to Adrian Moss. Timeout, Florida. Last timeout for Billy Donovan. Well, they keep it within two possessions. 106 to go. Still a six-point game. Back to the studio now. Here is Kara. Well, Dan, as you mentioned, just to remind fans, Keith Langford and Wayne Simeon, the Jayhawks juniors, gearing up for Luke Jackson and the undefeated Oregon Ducks tip off for that game, 208 Eastern, right here on ESPN. Back to your exciting finish. All right, Kara, thank you very much. Louisville up six, and again, Dick, as you talked about, no interior defense. Freeze it right here, freeze it. Look at this right here. Wide open, everybody's staring at the ball, and there's a layup. Bang, layup time. Layup city, I can make that. Hey, I read a great column today about Pat Forty who's out there at that game with Michigan State. He said the highest, highest seat yeah. the players look like ants. I love the line where he said a lead, the 7-3 guy looks like a little guard. Like a little point guard, yeah. <laughs> They're playing at Ford Field in Detroit against Michigan State.
Another big game today. Gonzaga will play Missouri and Seattle tonight. Memphis is at Illinois. Coming up minutes from now, Oregon and Kansas. This is a major Saturday for college hoops. What a major Saturday next week. You ready for North Carolina, Wake Forest? You ready for Duke and Texas? You and I will be at Madison Square Garden for that show. Marquette, Wisconsin. I mean, it's incredible. Some of the matchups getting ready. This is the first phase of college basketball. The second phase is the conference season. And the third phase, the strikeout pitch, is March Madness, where no other sport can match March Madness in terms of a month the way it captivates the nation. Louisville with the ball as we near the final minute of regulation. They're going to have to make free throws. Yep. I put them on a line to shoot less than 50 percent. Today, coming into today, they were shooting 77 percent as a team. So maybe today, just a bit of a fluke. They are only 8 for 17, Dick, as you said, from the line here in this game. You know, I saw sitting on sideline right across from us, Bobby Valvano. That's Jimmy's right. brother does the color commentary here for Louisville basketball. Does a great job with us on radio. I can't wait radio, but I get out with my guys, Golik and Greenberg, and talk stock up and down. You think there's a possibility the Gator stock is going a well, little bit down? Uh, the Terp stock has gone up. Yeah. Larry Williams. There's Bobby V. There's Bobby V. Bobby, I'm giving you some air time. Bobby V, some air time. At the line for the Cardinals, Luke Whitehead, a 75% shooter on the season coming into today. Look pretty good enough to throw right there. His daddy played here. His dad played 40 years here. ago, yeah. And his dad, who played here along with the West Sunset, sent him a note and sent him some stats and said, you know what? You got a rebound. You got a rebound. And Rick Pitino said, we don't need you to score, Luke. Rebound. We need you to rebound with Ellis Miles out for the season. And he's got eight double-doubles in his last ten games. He's talking about rebound. Wes Hunt took a rebound and had the great outlet pass. Six, seven. He was a monster man on the inside. One official overrules another, and the ball goes back to the Cardinals. Loved Wes Hunt. Used to speak at my basketball camp in New Jersey with my buddies Tommy Ramsden and Tony Camilio, Garden State. Basketball camp. He's got Brown there, too. Boy, a, a bad decision there in the inbounds play. Florida gets a turnover. Al Kaleem off on the three. Whitehead brings it down and is fouled. It looks like number 400 is going to happen for Mr. Patino. As he's going to beat his protege, he's going to beat his student, Billy Donovan, who walked into his office down at Providence and said, I want to transfer, my friend. I want to get out of here. And he looked at him and he said he was like the Pillsbury Dough Boy. boy. Yeah. He said, where's this guy going to play? How are we going to win with him? He tried Fairfield Northeastern. Nobody was interested. MVP of the Southeast Regional in 87 right. when the Friars made the Final Four. If his players, if the Florida players can dedicate themselves to the game with the same passion and love that Billy D has, I think they will regroup from this week. It just could be a bad week for basketball for the Gators this week. They have plenty of time to regroup. Dreyer is fouled, and he will shoot a couple. Florida needs some quick scores and some turnovers. Louisville is cooperating by missing some free throws here as Billy Donovan continues to search for his first win over Rick Pitino. 0-2 when Donovan was at Marshall and Pitino was at Kentucky. 0-2 when Donovan was at Florida and Pitino was at Kentucky. Well, I guess the number one could really be a bugaboo to certain people and it might be to Florida. They might not be able to psychologically handle that kind of situation. And I, if I were a coach in this club right now, I would give him a day off tomorrow. I would want him to see him, they'll look at film, they'll evaluate, just go out, enjoy yourself. The one beauty about college basketball, it's not what you're doing right now, it's what you're going to do in March. Because obviously this team's going to win enough games to get into the NCAA tournament. Next game for Florida, not for a week, like a lot of teams, they're in exams right now. Next Saturday they're going to play a well-coached and tough West Virginia team that already beat Maryland and Maryland beat Florida. As you see Oregon and Kansas coming up moments from now here on ESPN. Well, Coach Schumann, you sounded just like the coach because you better believe Mr. Donovan's going to keep repeating that and repeating that. He's going to repeat about Mr. Beeline's club beating Maryland and we couldn't beat him. Yep. So you better be ready to fly. Well, 40 seconds to go. They're down by five. One of the big stories coming into the game here in Louisville today. Francisco Garcia, just a few days after his brother was murdered in New York, decided to play basketball. He's got a lot of support from everybody in his Louisville family, including his best friend on the team, Taekwondo. We're very close, uh, actually like brothers. And uh, 
you know, to hear that, that situation happen, it, it just hurt me as much as it hurt him. But uh, I'm used to it. I've, I've faced uh, adversity, things like that, with losing my mother and grandmother in the span of two years and things like that. All I could do is be there for him. And, you know, I told him before the game that he not only lost a brother, but he gained a brother. That's a great, great roommate, my friend. Taekwon Dean, you talked to him two minutes, you can see why Bill Parcells was so high on him when he saw him in the summer league out in high school, played at Neptune, comes from a school where they produced a lot of good players. He told me one of his stars at the school when you walk through the halls, Jack Nicholson, the oh, actor. Really? That's right, his picture all over the place, Jack, Houston Nicholson. Jack had a lot of FaceTime uh, on the Laker game uh, on ESPN last night, did a halftime interview with Jim Gray. What else is new? <laughs> <laughs> Got a new movie out. Just a superstar on what he does. Five-point lead for Louisville. Both teams out of timeouts. Bill Parcells, by the way, also recommended another coach. He said, why don't you play for one of my buddies, Rick Pitino or Bobby Knight? Well, he decided to play for Mr. Pitino. Good look uh -oh. by one right hand ahead to Garcia. Hello. Oh, he broke his angle. Took his angle away. So Garcia will go to the line as we go to Kara in the studio. Well, guys, Oregon wearing its new green road jerseys for the first time this year, taking on number seven, Kansas, at Kemper Arena. No score in that one. It is underway, and as soon as your thriller at Freedom Hall ends, we will send our fans straight to Kemper Arena. Meantime, it's back to you, Dan and Dick. I'll tell you one thing, the ACC, Georgia Tech, is for real. They're no fluke anymore. People believe in it. Maybe the win over Connecticut was a fluke. Forget about it. Paul Hewitt has done an amazing job with terrific perimeter players. E.J. Elder is so underappreciated. You talk about Mohammed, explosive wing player. Jared Jack has improved big time. Now they get Will Bynum. And in that conference, you know, you talk Duke Carolina. Don't forget, Wake Forest, Skip Ross has done an amazing job with that team. And they are talented. I want my favorite type of dandies, Chris Paul. Dreyer tries to force the shot up. And then will foul Whitehead. And that should be just about it for the Gators as long as the Cardinals can knock down the odd free throw. Dan, we talked about how for them to win, Matt Walsh had to get going offensively. Unfortunately for Florida, they couldn't get him going at all. He was unable to score from the field. And the bottom line, it was a nightmarish afternoon for Mr. Walsh, just like it was for Mr. Lee in a game against Maryland. And to win against good competition, your Billy Donovan, he knows that he has to have all his people really all functioning in a positive way. The Louisville fans now taunting the Gators with the chant of overrated. Louisville helping to keep Florida in this game, though, as they continue to miss free throws. Still a two-possession basketball game, but it's pretty tough to come back and win unless you got a tough defensive team. See, that's the one great asset with Arizona. They can get down to people with that quick to stay yeah. happy defensively. If they can stay healthy, that's starting five. And as good as any starting five in the morning. Two more misses, but Dean on the floor forces the tie-up. The arrow gives it to Florida, so all that happens is a few seconds run off the clock. Alternate possession. Let us not go there again. You've been going We've there a lot. I've been going there a lot. <laughs> Look at Mr. Pedino in front of the Papa John side. This would be just the second Louisville win in program history over a team ranked number one. Now, again, Florida lost to Maryland, so we knew they were going to lose number one anyway, but they are technically the number one team in the country right now. The only other time Louisville beat a number one, they beat Seton Hall 50 years ago. I really believe there are 15 teams that can classify as number one. That's how wide open it is. I believe there are at least 15. They stand and cheer with jubilation with another big W for Rick Pitino as he gets number 400 in his career. What a performance. A heavy heart by Francisco Garcia. Starting to get overcome by emotion now. Playing for the second time this week since his brother was shot and killed Monday in New York. He is standing alongside his roommate and his best buddy, Taekwon Dean. And Garcia once again has led the Cardinals to a big victory. It was absolutely brilliant. I'll tell you, it played brilliantly. You're going to hear an incredible ovation for this young man that deserves any song. Garcia leads with 21 points, the high score in the game for the Louisville Cardinals, who have beaten Florida. Florida will 
drop to five and two. Louisville goes to four and one. A big win for the Cards. Up next, Kansas and Oregon. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Dick Vitale and Doris Burke, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching this Louisville win. Now to Ron Franklin and Jay Billis in Lawrence.